State Opera House speaking. One moment, please. Your call to Naples, Baron. All right, all right. Look at all the mess and muddle on this desk. Why can't you keep the place clean? Hello, hello. This is Baron Clayberg. Is that Signor Gatti speaking? I'm the secretary. Yes, I manage the business. He just does the singing. Oh, you'd like Signor Gatti to sing at your opera house? The only thing is, you know, we're on our holidays. Yes, but uh, how much? What? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, dear, dear, no. <laughs> we couldn't sing for that. Oh, no. <laughs> Getting warmer. Third time's lucky try again. Yes, well, if you'll accept those terms, it'll be satisfactory to us. Ah, yeah? Shh. I think I've arranged it for 3,000 a performance, all expenses paid, yes. and travelling train de luxe for me also. Hello. Hello. Baron Clebert. Yes, yes, no, yes. No, yes. No. No, 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 three thousand, three. Uh -huh. Yes, the contract is very satisfactory. <laughs> well, stick to it? Of course I'll stick to it. <laughs> All right, Aida, Tuesday. Yes, I'm giving you everything except the opera house. <laughs> 
<laughs> Will you throw that filthy sandwich away? Yeah. Twenty to forty shillings a seat, just because Ricardo Gatti is singing. Ridiculous. I shan't go. But you never do go to the opera in any case. Well, I certainly shan't go at that price. There's a Queen of Hearts next to a Black King. Well, what about it? Don't you know what that means? It means that Mary's going to be married. To a Black King? <laughs> no, of course not. To a dark elderly man with lots of money. I think I know who that is. Oh, do you? Well, who is it this time? Baron Clayburg. Ah, how delightful. Charming, charming. And how are you today? Extremely well. Uh, morning. A little surprise for you. Two tickets for the opera. Gatti is singing. Tuesday night. Aida. Do you believe in the cards? No, my clairvoyant tells me everything. Your clairvoyant? Yes, yes. Tell me, where is this Mary? She's in there. May I go and pay my respects to her? Please do. I'm sure she'll be delighted to see you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I'm sure she will. Come in. Good morning, beautiful. Oh, thank you, Baron. Oh, no, no, no. Don't call me Baron. Call me Felix. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly, Baron. <laughs> uh, Miss Mary, uh, may I call you Mary? Thank you so much. <laughs> you mustn't laugh at me. I'm so sorry. You know, there's something I've simply got to tell you. Yes? You'll never guess what it is. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> no, you won't. For the 20th time, you're going to tell me that I hope to marry you. <laughs> Wrong. This time, I have to tell you, you're going to marry me. Oh? Who said so? My clairvoyant. <laughs> what a marvelous woman. <laughs> Excuse me, won't you? Oh! I beg your pardon. <laughs> Quiet, Lorna. Going out? Yes. Why? Ask your clairvoyant. Good morning. Morning, Brooke. Uh, has a young lady been asking for me? No. Oh, is there a telephone message for me? No, nothing, Brooke, no. Can I speak to Mr. Brookner? Hmm? Uh, may I speak to Miss Mary Newberg, please? Hey, you can't. She's out. Mary! I'd say you shouldn't bring me up at home. Oh, well, I, I didn't mention my name. Listen, I was terribly afraid you weren't coming because I've got something very important to tell you. There's a job going at the State Opera House. Third conductor. I'm going along about it now. If only I could get it. Would you be so good as to let me use my own telephone? Well, of course. Why not? You come with me, Mary. You'll bring me luck. Come All on. right. I'm so sorry. Thank I you very much. Who do you want to see? The, the musical director. Wait inside. I'll wait here for Good. you. Good luck. Thank you. Now, are we all ready? Come along, ladies and gentlemen, please. Let's make a start. Come on, ladies, hurry up. Why elephants? I've got a very expensive tenor, and you insist on elephants in addition. All right, now, take care of that, that uh, prop there. You'd better put that on there, haven't you? Yes, you can have that one. You know what to do. But why? Why? Well, look at it. Right, too, won't you? That's right, that's right. In you go, yes? It's a good girl. Come on. Uh, Oh. 
Do you like it? No. Thank you for waiting to tell me so. Taxi. May I see you home? No. Are all the ladies of the Viennese Ballet so unfriendly? I don't know. Taxi! When can I see you again? Will you have tea with me? No. Perhaps dinner? Thank you, no. Drive on, please. Supper, please, yes? Thank you, no. Taxi! Come! Quick, 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 quick! Follow the taxi! Have you seen a young lady coming here? No. Are you quite sure? No. They wouldn't even see me. Come and sit down and tell me. Why didn't you wait for me? I saw Baron Kleberg arriving. I ran away. He knows my father. Kleberg? You know Baron Kleberg? Yes. Well enough to give me an introduction? Oh, no. I, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, you see, he's... He's what? He's rather fond of me. If I asked him a favor, well, he adores. 
don't you see? No, I'm afraid I don't. How do you Hello. do? How Very nice you? to see you here again. How are you? Hello, How Hello. do you do? <laughs> And this is all Senior Gatti needs for his broadcast tonight. Yes. And that. Oh, and that. One moment. What's that? Ah. Ah. Excuse me. Hello? Yes. Yes. Well, would you hold on a minute, please? Yes. Thank you. Now. I'm sorry. Now. How far should he stand, well, from this thing? The uh, microphone. Uh, thanks. I'll show you. Right. Tonight. Thanks. Still there? Yes. Good. I think a few words, a few words of introduction from me might be welcome, don't you think? No. Ah. Sorry. Goodbye. Hello. Are you there? Yes, of course I'm here. This is the, the ballet girl speaking. Oh, yes, yes. The ballet. Yes. I know. I remember you. Are you the one with the, um, uh, the legs? No legs. Oh, what a pity. I was going to ask you out walking. Yes. I did what? I gave you a caricature. Hello, hello, hello. What? Wait, hey. Hello? Well, I wanted to ask you something. You see, it's, it's a little difficult to explain so quickly. You can explain it to me quite slowly. Will you give me the pleasure of having supper with me tonight? I am quite free. No. No. All right. Ten o'clock. And where? I don't mind where. Oh, no. No, you can't call it my home. Oh, very well, then. Under the big clock. Ten o'clock. Au revoir. <laughs> You've got to broadcast. I don't care. I don't oh. care. <laughs> oh. Oh. No. I will not have you going out tonight. Uh, yeah. Stop me in here. I want to get out in the air. Yes, you're feverish. You'd better go straight to bed. But it's only just after half past nine. A good night's sleep will do you a world of good. Yes, perhaps you are right, Mummy dear, and I ought to go to bed. Good night, Mummy dear. Good night, my love. Good night, Daddy darling. Huh? Oh, good night, my dear. Good night. You're overtired. Now, I'm going to get you something that will send you straight off to sleep. Did you telephone for a private room? No. It's out of the question. Why? You're broadcasting tonight. <laughs> the whole of Europe is waiting for you. And so is the girl. And which is the more important? The girl, of course, the girl. Oh, shut up. Charlie, she's a darling. So young, so sweet, so fresh. If you could have heard how rude she was to me this morning. Oh, I adore her. And at 10 o'clock, I shall see her again. What are you doing with the telephone? Taking it out to supper. Charlie! Charlie!
there, Thank there. You, mommy. Put out your tongue. Oh, no, mommy. Swallow this down and you'll go to sleep till morning. I don't want to go to sleep. But oh. little girls don't always know what's good for them. Have a long. Put out your tongue. There's a good ah, little no. girl. Come along. There's a nest. There's a good little girl. Oh. <coughs> good night, my darling. Good night, darling. Happy dreams. Sir, but what's all this leading up to? To my rendezvous. Goodbye. Yes, sir. At ten o'clock. Certainly, sir. Prepare a room for Senior Gatti. It's not possible. We have no room vacant. 
But for Signor Gatti, there must be a room. Number one and two. No. No. Number three. No. <laughs> no. Number four. Who's in number five? The gentleman who lost the pearl stud last week. Oh, better leave him. He may lose another one. Who is in number six? A prize fighter. <clears throat> number seven? Mr. Schmidt. We don't know him. Oh, we don't know him? No. Good. He must go. Yes, but... He must go. Who's that for? Number seven, sir. I do wish they'd bring the dinner. I'm simply starving. You see, Dieting always affects my appetite, Mr. Did you say your name is Schmidt? <laughs> Call me Felix. <laughs> the soup, sir, such as you have never tasted before. <laughs> oh, it's horrible. Yes, it is. Uh, well, <clears throat> bring, the, bring the fish. I'm sorry. We cannot serve the fish. What? No fish? Yes, no fish. Well, bring something else. Uh, I'm sorry. We are having trouble with the boiler. Oh, it's not going to blow up. We cannot tell. But do not be alarmed. We have informed the fire brigade. What? The fire brigade? Oh. Well, at least we can have the wine. Yes. <laughs> Well, come along, bring the wine. The wine. The wine. Oh, the wine. <laughs> the wine, yes. Drinkable. I beg your pardon? I said I hope it's drinkable. I hope so. I... <gasps> oh! Now look what you've done. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'll bring another bottle. I don't suppose it will ever come out. No, it will never come out. <laughs> you clumsy baboon. What lovely hands you have. Your dress, madame. But you haven't cleaned it. Look at that big red stain. Well, it was red wine. You buy me another. <clears throat> Your bill, sir. 33 blue of butter. Ten o'clock, exactly. <laughs> I am so happy to see you. Le Navarin Daniel au printemps. Non, 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 non. 
poitrine de veau farci au gratin. Non, non, non. non. Ah, ah, risotto au foie de poulet. If I am not mistaken, the young lady is asleep. Shall I break it late? No, no, no. She's so tired. So many rehearsals. The cushion. The cushion. Sleeps beautiful. Stop. Everything's ready. Shall I get Signor Gatti? <laughs> hello, hello. This is Radio Vienna, broadcasting from the Alhambra Hotel in Vienna. Talk to you from his private suite and give you his life story with many interesting details. One moment, please. Let Signor Gatti. It's half past ten. Uh, you couldn't make it eleven, could you? When Signor Gatti is ready, he must close this switch and speak at once. I hope he does. I'm going to the control room. Control? Oh, my bedroom. Yes, you see, I control the volume from here while he broadcasts from there. Oh. And, uh, do you stay here? Yes. And you don't come out at all? No. Ah, Signor Gatti, we're all ready. All right, Charlie, I come, I come. The gentleman says when you put down the switch, speak immediately. Oh, me, 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 whistle, my heart. I crave the right to take you in my arms and make you mine and mine. Ah. Is good, Charlie? <laughs> Signoritas e signori, Buenos Aires. In other words, good evening. Now, how shall I begin? Yes, how shall I begin? I was born at a very early age in Italy. Sunny Italy. We lived in the ancient city, the very ancient city of um, Florence. Florence, land of song. Florence, land of song. Song. Flop, 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 Florence. 
Sir Lawrence is the ancient capital of Tuscany. It is situated on a magnificent river. The population is uh, very fluctuating in Florence. In 1854, the population was 155,675 only. This, of course, is before my time. I've been asleep. <laughs> the coffee. Mm. And uh, uh -huh. the supper. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes. <laughs> and then I find I have a voice. <coughs> and what a voice. And I say to my friends and relations, I say, I must sing. And my friends and relations say, must you? And I say, yes. And I go to my father, and I say, Father, I must go away and study. He says, yes, you must go away. So I go, and I start to sing, and I sing, and I sing, and I become Gatti, the great Gatti. I am always in the opera house. Dance? They cannot keep What's me going on? Well, if that's sing, Gatti I speaking, I the man dining here I is an imposter. That's what he is, an imposter. Get me a radio program. It was charming of you to come tonight. I'm going to confess. I came because I want you to do something for me. What do you want me to do? I want a letter of introduction. Oh, not for me. For my brother. Oh, you have a brother. <laughs> yes. He's a pianist. A brilliant pianist. Yes. Far too clever to be playing at the cafe. Just one word from you to the Opera House, and he's got his chance. He shall have it, for your sake. What is his name? Theodore. Theodore Bruckner. <laughs> now I know your name. How's that? <laughs> oh, of The radio program, sir. And where is he working now? At the Imperial Cafe. Uh -huh. And now that I have become famous in every capital of the world, I think it is only fair and fitting <laughs> to introduce to you the man that has made this possible. The man who made me Gatti, the Gatti. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> my secretary, Charlie. <laughs> Come on, Charlie, say a few words. Oh, no, Signor Getty, I couldn't really. <laughs> Don't be silly. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> if you insist. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> well, this is the most embarrassing moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was Signor Getty, the famous tenor. He is broadcasting tonight. But that's impossible. May I refer you to this radio paper? <laughs> Signor Getty, pardon me. <laughs> but who was that? The man who made me the great Gatti. My secretary. <laughs> but keep it a secret, huh? <laughs> Excuse me. Very good, sir. Very good, sir. You know, you shouldn't really be here at all. <laughs> I'd sooner be here than anywhere in the world. Do you often do things like this? I mean, break important engagements for the sake of a girl you don't know. Only if the girl is adorable like you. Are you angry with me? No. One song in my memory will never die. My
Show him in. Good evening, Signor Gatti. Good evening. M my name is Bruckner. You sent for me? Yes, your sister has been telling me all about you. My sister? But <laughs> I have no sister. Mary. She's not your sister. Well, uh, yes, yeah, she's my stepsister. I see. Your stepsister. Mr. Bruckner, will you be so kind? You, you wish me to play for you now? Yes. I must know whom I am recommending to the opera. I promised your stepsister. play very well. I shall be delighted to recommend you. Oh, thank you so much. I, I hardly know what to say to thank you. Oh, well. Will you excuse me, Signor? Certainly. Well, good night, Signor Gatti. Good night. Mary, I... Well, good night, Mary. Good night. for your stepbrother.
Hey, isn't it marvelous? Why, what's the matter? You're supposed to love me. You find me alone with a man. And what do you do? You play the piano. But he asked me to. You should have knocked him down. Why? Supposing I told you that he'd kissed me. So that was how you got him to send for me. That was clever of you. Mary, do you know that I'm made? I know it, I feel it. I'm going to be great. In that case, everything's all right. When is he going to give me an introduction? He gave it to me. Oh, good. Well, where is it? I tore it up. You? I tore it up. But you spoiled everything. Did you get me a taxi? I never want to see you again. I congratulate you. It was most interesting. I wouldn't have missed a word. From where did you acquire such universal knowledge? <coughs> it is a gift. It's a oh, gift. Well, see. You know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Charlie, don't be angry with me. How did you get out? Through the keyhole? All right, all right. I forgive you. You forgive me? Yes. Do you realize that I've spent 25 years of your life in half an hour? I do the same for you. Uh, I do the same for you. Oh. You have, in my memory will never die. I do the same for you. Your have, will be sweeter still as time goes by. I do the same for you. I'll go and see. Where is he? 
Who? Bruchner. Oh, Bruchner. Oh, he doesn't work here anymore. Well, where is he? I don't know. <clears throat> oh, but you must know. You see, he knows where she is. Where who is? Oh. She. The girl I've come to find. Ah, then you'd better find him first. Yes, you're a great help. Yeah. That's what I'm here for. I've got to find a girl. Mm, you want a girl? Ah. Ah, well, it's nothing like that. I want a particular girl. Then you'd better advertise. I'd better advertise. You're right. That's a marvelous idea. My old friend. Comrade. <laughs> you gorgeous head waiter. Well, 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 well. Things one reads in the papers nowadays. To my fair companion at the Mont Bijou, on the evening of October the 9th, from 10 to 11. I shall be glad to give a concert for charity on condition that she appears in person to nominate the charity to benefit. The concert to be held on October the 17th in any public place she may select. Will the young lady kindly reply to Hotel Alhambra, Suite 17? How dare he? What, my dear? How dare he ask a girl to confess openly that she spent an evening with him at the Mont Bijou, alone in a private room? I didn't notice anything about being alone in a private room. And at any rate, it was at the Mont Bijou, and that's bad enough. Now, Father, you can't expect Mary to know what sort of a place the Mont Bijou is. No, I suppose I can't. But if it comes to that, who told you? He dares to ask her to admit she's been to such a place. Well, after all, darling, it's for charity. Charity? It's blackmail. Did you know they had private rooms at the Mont Bijou? No, 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 no. Hello. Yeah? <laughs> yeah? What? Who? Where is she? Downstairs? Send her up immediately. <laughs> She's here. Oh! <laughs> the girl! Which girl? Oh! The girl of my advertisement. Tell her to her, I'm just coming. All right. Just coming. Wait, wait a moment. They're giving me my, my trousers. My trousers. I know. Quick. <laughs> See. <laughs> there she is. Don't let her go. Don't no. let her go. Right. Hello. Wait, wait. I'm so glad you've come. Will you sit down? So you were in the private room. Well? He'll be here in a minute. I'm so glad he advertised. You don't know what I've been through. Really? You see, I'd only borrowed it. Oh. From my sister. I see. And now she wants it back. Oh, I see. Wants what back? The dress. The, the dress I took off. You took your dress off? Well, of course. Yes, yes, go on. You'd better tell him I'm here. Yes. Took her dress off. She wants it back. What back? You ought to know. You took it off. Took her? What? Her dress. I took? You are mad! Gatti. Why so formal? Don't mind me. <laughs> huh? What? Don't you know each other? No. no. Then who did take your dress off? Come in. Let it alone. I haven't finished with it yet.
this is better than all your operas. I'm going to enjoy myself. Do you know what my clairvoyant told me? What? No, I don't, and I don't care. Why are you so cross with me? Because I wanted to be alone with you. You insist on bringing father and mother along. You wanted to be alone with me? Yes. I beg your pardon. Oh, what a song! It will be sweeter 
I am not going to make a speech, but please keep your seats, as I have something very, very important to tell you. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will ask the young lady whose wish we have fulfilled, would she kindly step forward and tell us to which charity she would like the donations to be given. If she was brazen enough to go to a private room with him, then she ought to come forward. What do you think I came here for? For the same reason as all the other men. What's that? To see what she's like, of course. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the second time, <laughs> would the young lady please uh, stand up? <laughs> for the third and last time, would the young lady please <laughs> step forward? Ladies and gentlemen, I wish this money to be given to the city orphanage. I'm sure it will make the children very happy. And now, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you. There was no lady with Signor Gatti at the Mont Bijou restaurant on the evening of October the 9th, from 10 till 11. You'll remember that on that particular evening, at that very hour, Signor Gatti was broadcasting the story of his life. And besides, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure Signor Gatti would never have been so tactless as to ask a lady to compromise herself publicly like this. The whole idea was just a publicity stunt to raise funds for the city orphanage. I'm sure the poor kiddies will be most grateful to Signor Gatti for his unique idea. I also am most happy to have been able to help you with your little scheme. 
You know, of course, my future husband, Madame Clayberg. You must come to our wedding. Uh, now try and sing that off. See me moping? Ha! I've had thousands of love affairs. Do I allow them to get me down? <laughs> Not on your life. I'm the one who gets them down. <laughs> What's on your mind? Charlie, it's absolutely impossible that she can marry this man. Oh, uh, you still think of that? There are other things in life far more important. Look, another contract from the Vienna State Opera. Vienna? Never again. What? Do you mean to say you're going to do nothing about that voice of yours? Heavens above. Oh, if I had a voice like that, you couldn't keep me out of the opera houses. <laughs> do you know I'd call myself... Yeah. I'd, there. Uh... <laughs> well, well, here's an interesting one. Look, it's from an old... I will be there. You're crazy rushing off like this. Ha, I wouldn't make a girl make a fool out of me. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Hey, here's your attache case. Quickly. Now, listen, if you get into trouble, send for me. I'm your... Oh, look what you've done. Hey, look, you've caught the road. Hey, I don't want to go with you. Let go. Open the door, you idiot. Open the door. Hey, look what you're doing. Oh, you...
Johann Felix Kleberg, will you take this woman, Mary Newberg, to be your lawful wedded wife? No! Oh, my father! My father! I why? can't bear it, oh. Mother! Mary, why? Why did you do it? I'm sorry, Father, but I couldn't help it. I don't love him. 